hello guys welcome to my channel in this video we are going to see how to create email calculator in python so let me show a short demo first so this is the app you are going to develop which will have a amount interest and tenure and the user can click on calculate it will give us the emi value uh, that the user have to return back for every month and the total interest that he would pay as part of the tenure and the total amount which is the principal amount plus the total interest he is going to spend so let's uh, see this in action let me add one lakh as amount and i will put the interest as 16 percentage and the tenure as three years and let me click on calculate so here we go so the user have to return back uh, 3500 every month and in the end of the tenure of three years uh, he would be returning uh, this 26,000 as interest and the total amount would be 1,26,000. It's a very simple application and we are going to develop using Python TK Inter. And we are also displaying a nice little uh, pie chart here uh, which would uh, summarize how much interest I am paying against the principal amount. Let's get started with this. I have uh, created a empty project in uh, PyCharm and let me remove all this first thing we need to do is to import the tk inter uh, library we have added a uh, alias as tk so that we could uh, access every method and class using this alias let me create a main window first So I have created an instance of the class tk in the library tk enter and then I have set a title to that window and then I am calling the main loop that would open up the window and listen to the events that we have subscribed. So let's run this application now. So this is a basic window with no controls and no functionality. As you could see, it has the title we have set. Now we have to add the controls and add function further functionality to this so that we can get our EMI calculator. I'm going to set the geometry as empty now so that uh, the window size would uh, take up uh, the size of the controls inside the window. Let me add the labels required first. Let me add a padding uh, in X and Y so that uh, it would uh, give enough space between the text and the control outer. In uh, TK Inter, uh, we have uh, three uh, system to place the controls, which is grid system, place, or pack. Here we are going to use grid system, and I want this to be in uh, row zero. So we can add a grid and say row zero, and it will be added in that location. This will be row one. So this is what we get out of this code. We have added uh, three uh, labels and uh, we have used grid system to place it. We have placed this in row 0, row 1 and row 2. So it's arranged in the order we wanted it to arrange. Next we will add a button to calculate the EMI. This we will add in row 3 and what we want is we want it to take the whole place in row 3. I will explain that in a minute. What we want is we are going to add that text boxes in this location for uh, all the three rows and we want this calculate to occupy the entire space instead of uh, just 
sliding to the left so we used column span to accomplish that column span 2 would uh, take uh, the two places in that particular row so let's go ahead and add the entries we need now we get the idea so we have covered uh, row 0 row 1 and row 2 with these labels and uh, in the column 1 of these rows we have added a text box that is the entry so now let's see how the window looks like so we have uh, the labels and the entries uh, arranged in a way we expect it to arrange and the calculate button has taken up the space that is occupied by these two controls in this particular row that's because of the column span we expect it to two so now uh, let's add uh, further uh, things that are needed like uh, emi and the value for that emi and then uh, total interest and total amount and their values so we have to add uh, corresponding uh, things as labels here i will go ahead and add it So we have added the required labels and entries and uh, along with uh, other labels that would show us the result of EMI total interest and amount. So this is how the window now looks like with this particular code. We now go ahead and add some font styles and uh, stuff to make it uh, look even better. Yeah, we have just changed uh, it to Arial 16 size so that it's different from those other things in the window. Now we are done with uh, how the UI actually looks. Now we have to do the logic part of it. The first thing we want to do is associate variable with each of the controls here like amount, interest, tenure and EMI total interest and payment we have to create uh, a variable for each of the controls separately first so let's go ahead and add those variables here int var will create an integer variable so the principal amount i am going to have it as an integer and other things i am going to have it as a string For a string variable, we have a string var. Let me add the other, other variables as well. So for each of the controls, we have added uh, corresponding variables here like uh, amount principal and interest uh, rate and uh, tenure years and emi uh, emi and total interest as total interest and total payment as total amount so let me hook these variables to these particular controls to let me add these entries here so that i could use the variables So I have hooked uh, all the variables to those controls and the primary use of these variables is that it allows dynamic uh, entry of uh, data and dynamic display of data.
both of the things are uh, needed here we want a user to dynamically enter these values in the control and we want uh, those values in the program to process it and we also have to display the processed output to the user like ami total interest and payment so for that we are declaring these variables and hooking uh, those variables to these controls next thing we want is to execute uh, some code when we click on that button We have added a command which would uh, hook this method to this button and when we click on this the command will get executed as you can see the EMI calculated is getting displayed because this function uh, this method is getting executed. I have set the initial values as zero and these are displaying as zero because I have uh, set every variables associated with these controls as zero. So let's add the calculate logic here. So I am going to get all those values from the controls and convert them into a way I can uh, use it in the logic. The user will give in the amount and rate and the tenure so we have uh, used those particular uh, variables and got those values converted into integer float as required and uh, this 1200 is nothing but we need to divide uh, the given uh, number that is the interest by 12 that is 12 months and another hundred uh, for uh, percentage like 16 percentage is 16 uh, percent for year and we need to divide by 12 16 by 12 uh, that gives that percentage in months and then just uh, divide the whole thing by 100 we need to divide everything by 1200 so that uh, the input given will in effect converted to the interest in month that we need to use it in the EMA formula so let us see the email formula here we have uh, the principal amount and the rate we have given which is the monthly rate of interest and n is the number of uh, months so we have uh, in this app we have given it as number of years so we need to multiply it by 12 and uh, we have uh, already converted uh, the given rate uh, per year as rate per month we have done that so we need to just Put this as a formula and write the corresponding code so emi value input principal that is the p and input rate that is the interest the remaining thing is pretty complex i would say one plus r divided to the power n divided by one plus r to the power n minus one so we need to do this Python has a function pow for this. Let me add one plus input rate to the power n, which is input tenure, and to divide that by the same thing. And minus one so this might be confusing but yeah this is just a formula now I am going to set the variables associated with the EMI control now let's try this out so 
so we are getting the value here but we are getting this big number which is even moving this window apart so let's fix that so we have used a format method and give a string specifier with this we would in turn uh, reduce the number of uh, decimal places to two so that uh, we will have a shortened value let's test this out yeah so it's really nice to see these two digits instead of this long string so let me uh, fill in the remaining values as well so we have calculated the total uh, payment which is the emi value into the particular uh, number of months and uh, total interest would be the total payment value minus the input uh, principal amount and i have uh, set those variables uh, of that particular controls and we have used the same string specifier so that we get the right value with the right size yeah we got all the values filled in this is pretty neat we allow the user to input in values uh, amount interest and tenure and we hooked a event method uh, to this particular button and we calculated uh, those values by extracting the values out of this control and converting it into a format that we would be able to process and then finally use the ema value calculator uh, formula and uh, come up with this emi value then using that we have uh, calculated total interest and total amount we are going to pay finally we are going to add a widget uh, that is a plot uh, in pie chart uh, that uh, gives us a pictorial representation of what's the total interest we are going to pay for the loan and what is the actual principle uh, just a comparison so let's go ahead and add that for this we need a mat plot lib this library backends we are going to import figure canvas tk ag class and also we need to import a figure class First, let us handle the UI part. Here, uh, we will add a frame for the chart. We are going to add this chart to the side of the whole application. So, I am going to give row as 1 and specify the column as 2. We have never uh, used column 2 now. So whatever we add will get pushed to the side of the already existing controls. So we are going to use a row span so that it will occupy the entire rows. Like these many rows we have, we, it will occupy and just be placed at the side of the earth. So the UI part is pretty much complete. Now we can add the logic part. So as you can see in this example, uh, we have uh, to add labels for this chart and we are going to add principal and interest as uh, labels and we will give the values. So let's create a label uh, for list. So we are creating a list and we are used uh, string interpolation that is the f string and we have uh, just filled in the values total interest rate and we formatted that so we have interest and uh, principal ready as labels and we need to have uh, values
first thing we need to do is create a figure object next thing to do is we need to add a subplot to this figure so basically this subplot uh, is a matrix we need to specify uh, the index as well as the row column values so we will have only one plot in this figure so that we could add one first row first column and first index so one 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 and this would in turn add a subplot in that subplot let's add a pi pie chart wherein we will give the values first and then uh, specify uh, the radius as one and then give the labels involved and give a uh, shadow as false so this is the setting i want this to have and I'm going to create a chart out of this. This is where we are going to use figure canvas TK aggregator class. And we will give uh, this figure as input and frame chart that we previously created for UI as another parameter. And using this final chart, I could get a widget that would be compatible with tk so finally we made the connection to the actual ui in this frame chart and we got the actual widget here and we need to just place it in the frame for that uh, we are using pack instead of grid because this it's just only one control so we have placed the chart here and that is done now let's see this in action yeah nice little chart we have displayed here and we filled in the values at the right places and it's an actual picture a representation of the input values and output here so let's do this again here we see that chart is getting added again and again when i click again and again it's getting added so let's handle that let's add a global variable here for the chart So if here we are going to just uh, remove the chart if it's already set so that uh, in the second time when we click it, it will remove and add a new one. To remove the chart, uh, we have a method that is pack forget. So here the pack would add the chart to the frame and pack forget would remove the chart from the frame so with this we have handled the, that extra case wherein we are uh, getting more more and more charts when we click more and more uh, calculate so let me give a higher value like 5 lakhs and the interest would be 12 percentage and the tenure would be 5 years let me click on calculate the interest gets calculated uh, total interest and total amount that i'm going to pay and uh, a neat little uh, pie chart uh, we got and let me click it again with the changed values 14 percentage so it's just updated instead of adding again and again so we have this ema calculator ready in python so we have uh, added the required entry controls we have uh, added an event for this calculate button we just processed uh, this input data and uh, into a form we can recognize and made the formula run over it get the required values and finally displayed in this particular chart 
so it's a simple application uh, good for beginners so that's it for this video if you like this video like share and uh, subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for uh, further videos thank you